I'm Amy Taylor. I started getting migraines when I was 15, and I was getting a couple of um, a month until I got into college and um, started getting more stress in my life and dealing with more things. Um, the migraines increased, and um, by the time I was 30, it was to the point where I was getting a migraine pretty much every day. And so um, when I found Dr. Reed, it was a blessing because I was maxing out all my prescriptions every week and I was going to the ER so many times that even the ER doctors were starting to say, look, we're giving you too many pain med medicines too often. You need to figure something else out. And so that's when I came across Dr. Reed. Typically, at least with me and, and a lot of other migraine patients I've talked to, um, anesthesia in general will trigger a migraine. And so you almost always feel terrible coming out of the surgery. So whenever Cher comes over and first turns it on, you immediately know whether it's gonna work. And that's what's so great about the trial. Um, and if you are having them as often as you need to be having them to qualify technically, you know, to, to really um, get the, the trial going, then in that four or five day period, you're definitely going to experience a migraine if you didn't get one coming out of surgery. So it's very easy to tell. I mean, it's immediate. As soon as you turn it on um, and get it high enough to where you don't feel the pain anymore, it's just gone. So yeah, you know immediately. It's wonderful. The worst part about the trial is when they take it out. Because I live here in Dallas, I would I really took advantage of Cher, the nurse, um, that helped with the programming. And I mean, I had, I was coming in once a week to reprogram because as the swelling and everything goes down and as you get back into your normal routine and you're you know, sleeping well and you're healing, um, the sensations move around and the, the stem sort of has to settle in and that takes a while. Um, for me, it took about two months until I was at a point where I didn't feel like I needed to change any of the programming. But I also have like 25 different programs to choose from at any time and I do use almost all of them. I've had my stimulator for almost two years. My um, first surgery was um, in November of 10, 2010. So it's almost two years now. Um, I did have to have a revision. All of a sudden, one day last January, my stem did stop working on the right side. It just came disconnected. So we did have to do a revision, but it was not a big deal. We did that in February. Um, but I do, I have about 25 different programs on mine. Um, they range from high frequency to low frequency. They've got cycles where it can um, be a high frequency for a good 45 seconds and then it stops for 15 seconds. So it kind of gives you a, a second to relax. Because when the higher you turn the stem up, the more um, pressure you feel in your head. And the higher it is, the less you can move your head around because as you move, the sensation moves around your head. I also never turn mine off. So some patients only turn theirs on when their head hurts, but I find that since my head pretty much hurts every day, if I turn it off, I'm gonna wake up with a migraine, so I might as well just sleep with it on low and not feel bad in the morning. Like today, um, for example, and over this last weekend, I'll give you an example. I was feeling great on Saturday, woke up feeling great, but by about five o'clock, storm clouds started rolling in, and by 5.30, I was full blown, you know, stem was barely noticeable, barely running to turning it up as high as I could um, and having to get out of the sun and, and lay down and get away from everybody. Um, but once I did that for a good half an hour and just laid down and, and was still for a while and didn't you know deal with any stimuli at all, I felt better and I was able to turn the stem way down again and go on with my day. So um, you know, it's days like that. I, I work every single day in an office. And so um, the, everybody in my team is used to me pulling my stem out and changing my settings two or three times a day. Um, sometimes I feel like my migraines are intelligent in that, you know, you turn the stimulator on and this is why I have so many different settings. You turn the stimulator on and the migraine moves because you're stimulating back here so it moves over here. So you have to change your setting so that now you can simulate this, and then sometimes it'll stay there and goes away, whatever, but then other times it'll move again. So it's really interesting that, that that's what's happening, and, I, and I've talked to other patients and they've, they've experienced the same thing, it's interesting. It's not a cure, it's a pain reliever. It cuts away the pain, but you're still experiencing the migraine. You're still, um, your body is still, 
you know, physically reacting to that much pain, even though you can't feel it, right? And so they, they it, you know, you have different parts of your life that you never thought you'd have to deal with. Like, instead of my friends being upset with me now because my head doesn't hurt, now they don't understand, well, I thought you got this miracle cure. Why aren't you feeling better all the time? So, so that's a big life change because you think it's going to be, you know, perfect. And it is a million times better than without it. I can go to concerts and stuff now because I'm not, I can turn my stimulator up and not be overly stimulated by all the people and the noises and the lights and the crowds and the smoke and the, everything that a migraine patient is so sensitive to. You can now be out and about and interact with those things and not be bothered by it. Living with a stim is making sure it's charged if I'm going to go out of town. That's really it. Um, you know, I, I typically have to charge up about once a week and I do it while I'm watching TV or cleaning house. And um, my friends have a funny reaction when I say, oh, I can't, I got to charge tonight. Working with Dr. Reed's staff before, you know, in, even getting to the trial um, and getting through the trial and then getting qualified again to get the permanent, um, they were awesome. Um, I can be kind of a pain. I was calling every day to find out what the insurance said. I was calling the insurance company every day. Why haven't you approved, you know, this? And um, I know I was driving the ladies crazy, and they were always so nice to me. Everybody at Dr. Reed's office is so nice. Cher, the, um, my particular um, patient nurse for the STEM, has always been accommodating. Um, you know, she's met me at Starbucks before. She's made sure she can get to me if I really need to, um, have her change something if I'm having a problem. We, you know, there's face group, Facebook groups that, that are now existing so that patients can talk to one another and um, compare notes, so to speak. So it's, it's good. It's, they're great. Well, I spread the word with Read Migraine to everybody I talk with. Um, I've got stuff up at my desk that gives people information about migraines. And any single person I talk to that I know of, anybody that experiences migraines, I'm like, okay, how often? because you gotta go talk to Dr. Reed. Are you having them too often? Because if you're having them more than 15 days, you gotta go talk to Dr. Reed. And let me tell you about my procedure. And even people, um, it's funny because I actually don't mind carrying my um, controller around because when I pull it out, nine times out of 10, somebody asks me, what are you doing? And then I get the opportunity to tell them because everybody knows somebody that suffers migraines. Everybody does. And most often they're women. And if you can, give that information to somebody and they just happen to remember a little bit of it that they can start looking it up, finding the information, find Dr. Reed's site. Um, I did start a Facebook group for the adult patients of Dr. Reed's um, group because I wanted, I knew that there were other patients locally as well as around the country and stuff that, that, um, you know, were getting the procedure. And I wanted to find out, you know, when I got mine, I think I was the 70th patient in the world. So, there wasn't a whole lot of other people to compare notes against. And now there's a lot more people, so we can compare notes and say, yeah, I kind of experienced that too. And, or, you know, we can give each other advice. Like Kim was saying, sometimes what she does when she has to turn her stem up real high is she lets it run real high for 30 minutes straight and then turns it off for a little while. Well, I've never tried that before. And if I hadn't talked to another patient, I wouldn't have known that. So the face, Facebook group has been really nice because um, people do post questions and they post, hey, how did you deal with the insurance and, and do you have any suggestions on how to get this or that? And so it's good. It's good.